Hi guys, it's just the Orange Rhino, by my hat you can tell, um, also known as Sheila. This is my first blog post on video. Um, I hurt my arm pretty bad and I can't type, at least not for the next few days. I haven't typed for most of the last few weeks and who knows when I'm going to be able to type. So I have a lot to communicate, a lot I've been thinking about, so I decided to try something new tonight. You're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to fumble through this. Gosh knows what I'm going to say or how I'm going to look. Um, so just, if nothing else, have a good laugh at me because laughter is good for the soul and puts everyone in a good place to not yell. So tonight's post is, let's call it, what does hurting your arm have to do with not yelling? Or better put, let me see my notes, four things that hurting my arm reminded me about the power of not yelling or even like how to not yell. I'll start with this simple part. So Labor Day happened, my son was having a seizure, and I was leaning over him, you know, like this, kind of hunched down for, I don't know, 20 minutes straight. And as a result, this whole area tightened up. A few hours later, it was still hurt. The next day, it still hurt. I was in a lot of pain. But I refused to admit that I was in pain and that I needed help and I needed to see the doctor. Because if you remember, a year ago, almost to the day, I broke my right foot. I was in a walking cast and then a full-on cast from foot to knee from September until January. My mom had to come to move, you know, move in to drive me and the kids everywhere. I couldn't exercise. I was pretty much outright miserable. So the thought of having another debilitating injury, I just refused. I refused to entertain it. I refused to get help. Fast forward 10 days. Last Thursday, I was driving my son to an appointment. Got rear-ended. <laughs> You know, sometimes things just keep happening. And I was in the process of massaging my arm, and so it jolted forward really bad, causing more pain. Again, I'm not going to get help. I tried getting a massage, car, you know, all things. I am not injured, even though every night I grimaced in pain. I cried getting out of bed in the morning because I couldn't use my right arm. I was being completely stubborn. And then this morning happened. I could not get out of bed. My husband's traveling. My three-year-old's in bed with me. I could not use my arm at all to pull myself out of the bed or even roll. Even rolling hurt. When I got back from going to the bathroom to get in bed, I literally was breathing like I was in labor because the pain was so bad. And at that point, I said, Sheila, enough is enough. you got to stop being stubborn. You have to ask for help. And that's like one of the first things I learned that helped me finally stop yelling is there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I'm afraid to ask for help. I'm allergic to it. I write a lot about that in my book. But there's nothing wrong. It, if asking for help makes me more relaxed and gets me what I need so I can be happier, that's, that's a win-win for everyone. It means I'm better around my kids. I'm going to yell less. It's going to be easier. I'm just much more pleasant. So I did. I got help. My, luckily, my mom's here this week, um, although she seems to always be here when I have serious injuries, so maybe she needs to stop coming. Um, so I woke her up. I said, you got to get the kids to school. I'm going to urgent care. I can't, I can't handle the pain anymore. And I got there and I explained what happened and they finally left the room and I burst into tears. And I could hear this old man next to me thinking, why is this woman crying? Maybe I was crying because I had five minutes to myself <laughs> without kids at seven in the morning. It was glorious. But no, I was crying because I could not believe that yet again I was injured and I was in so much pain and it reminded me of how bad last year was and how I couldn't exercise. I couldn't just pick up and do random acts of kindness because I couldn't drive myself anywhere. I gained so much weight from my injury. I mean, it really, it brought me down for a good six months. And I could not believe that here I was a year later with another injury so incredibly intense because the doctor had said, you need to get an MRI. Sounds like you have a tear. This is not good. Um, and I started crying because I didn't want to go there again. But also, my book comes out in a month. And not only that, I'm supposed to be writing right now. I have... This awesome um, book blog tour coming up. Everyone's writing about it. I'm supposed to be putting stuff on the blog. I want to be communicating with you guys. I have so much to say, so much I want to be writing because writing helps me. It's kind of like my stress relief for yelling. And I'm being told I can't do it. I already haven't done it for three weeks. And I just, I felt self-pity. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I have something I need to do. I'm like, what have I done wrong to have so many little bad things happen? And then perspective kicked in. Um, and that's one of the other huge, powerful tools that helped me stop yelling. You know, my favorite word is at least. Milk spilled. Okay, at least it wasn't a glass container of milk because I would have been a bigger pain. Um, so here I am sitting in my little, you know, hospital gown thing at urgent care, eating my yogurt so I can take the medicine that they gave me, crying, and I finally found perspective. And I thought to myself, hey, 
Yes, you can't write, but at least you hurt your arm this year and not last year. Because last year, you were on deadline for the book under a contract. So last year, it really mattered. Thank God you broke your foot last year and you only hurt your arm this year. It could have been a lot worse. That was pr perspective number one. Perspective number two was obviously, hey, it's it's just an injured arm. I am it's not going to be a lifelong thing. There's so many people who struggle more. It's going to be okay. You know, you have help. You know, you will get through it. And then the other piece that my kind of took away from it is, you know, look for a lesson sometimes if you need to find perspective. It's, hey, the world is telling you to slow down. You you cannot write. You have too much on your list. So in a way, even though I want to write and it's something I really want to do, I can't. So it made my to-do list a little bit easier or my wish list. Um, so again, finding perspective in a situation is a great way to change how angry or annoyed or frustrated you feel about it and feel a little bit better so you can handle it better. You know, with yelling, that is especially true. Like I said, the word at least. Um, they're beating each other up. Hey, at least only two of my kids are fighting and not four. I mean, trust me, these days, that's awesome. Um, at least I can laugh. There's so many at least you can do when you find the perspective. Um, it's hard, but it's really powerful. So that's two things so far about yelling that this situation is reminding me. Find perspective to keep from yelling and also asking for help. There's nothing wrong with it. The other thing comes back to the whole... When there's a will, there's a way. And this one you got to bear with me on for a second. Part of the reason why I didn't ask for help is I was bound and determined that I was going to will this pain away. I, I'm in denial. I am not injured. It doesn't hurt. I don't need help. I can handle it. I'll just do ibuprofen and heat pads and I, I'll try not to use my arm and blah, 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 blah. Because I just, I didn't want it to happen. I didn't want to believe that it really was a problem. And that's very similar when I used to yell. I didn't want to believe that I had to stop yelling. I didn't want to believe that I really had a problem. What I wanted to believe is that if I willed it away in my mind, if I just thought, it's, of course it's going to get better. I don't really have to work at it. The kids are going to get easier or I'm going to get more sleep or blah, 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 blah. All these excuses, it will just go away because I'm just going to think it away um, without having to get help or do anything about it. And, you know, sometimes that works, you know, some situations, but big ones, hurting your arm where you legitimately have a real problem and yelling too much Simply willing it away without doing anything active, it's not going to make it go away. And I think that's part of the reason why I finally stopped yelling is I figured out that I needed to admit to it, you know, ask for help and really go after it. Um, of course, on the flip side, too, you can't will it away. You can, at the same time, will it to happen in a positive way. I think a lot of why I learned to stop yelling is because I said positive things to myself. And let me tell you, growing up with my mom, she's super... She's cheesy and wonderful and all that. Oh, just think positive. And that's just, I think positive, but that's not all I am. I'm more of a realist. However, this whole journey to yell less made me start thinking more positive and talking positive to myself and willing things positive um, to happen. Like, I can choose to not yell. I will not yell. Um, I'm going to choose love at this moment. I'm going to choose to be kind. I'm going to choose to be understanding. I can get through to 9.05. I just have to get the kids to school. And talking positive to myself that were real concrete things to change my mindset in that particular situation did help me to not yell. And I know that kind of sounds like a complete, um, I guess, counterproductive statement to what I just said, that you can't will it away. You know, you just have to look at it both ways. You know, if you feel like you're yelling, like I did, I couldn't just think it was going to stop because it was bigger than me. It wasn't just going to stop. I had to change it. I had to will it to happen in a good way by doing something active to make it happen. And in this situation, I stopped yelling by thinking positive thoughts. Um, so that's the whole, I guess it's, I'd figure it out if I was writing, like how to say that more sense, but hopefully you get, you know, what I'm saying there. Um, and then to make it even more confusing, again, writing helps me figure this out. Um, the good old saying, when there's a will, there's a way. I want to write. And it's great that I've had like the last three weeks off, I've been able to focus on back to school and my son's Scooby-Doo birthday and my son's seizures and all sorts of other things, but I still want to communicate. I want to write. I just feel pent up. So I'm making a video. You know, here I am. I'm trying to find a way. Ouch. Um, that was not smart. Just shrug the shoulder. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to communicate with all of you and get my thoughts out, and I'm determined. So I'm trying a video. I have no idea if any of you are going to watch it. I have no idea if I'm even looking at the green dot. I'm a computer that says I'm looking straight, not down. Um, I have no makeup on. I look ridiculous, but I needed to talk and feel like I was there for you guys and there for me and just think of some of the thoughts and again, find perspective because talking about this helps me realize that it's not the end of the world. Um, 
And again, bringing it back to yelling is I wanted to stop yelling, period. And I was determined. You know, orange rhino, orange is a determined color. Like that's the symbolism. And I knew I would need to be determined. I was going to come no matter what, hell or high water, stop yelling. And it took, same thing like here, it took creativity and thinking out of the box and just trying to come up with new ways to achieve a goal because sometimes the old thing doesn't work. Um, I can't write right now. That's not a, something I can do. But I can talk to the computer screen and then take like two minutes to post it. I can do that. You know, with yelling, everyone says, my mom especially, just walk away, take a deep breath, yada, yada, yada. Okay, it works. But I got to tell you, if you tell me to take a deep breath, I will explode. It drives me nuts. It's just not who I am. So that doesn't work. The traditional methods of, you know, staying calm in the moment did not help me not yell. So I thought out of the box. I screamed into the freezer. I did orange post-it notes. I told my kids I loved them when I wanted to yell. I stomped my feet. I found a way to make it work. Again, when there's a will, there's a way. So let me, I'm going to look down for a second. 11 minutes. This is probably way too long. I don't know how to edit it. I can't edit it. Um, but thank you for watching my first Orange Rhino video blog thing. I hope you enjoyed the hat. One of my um, readers made it. I think it's adorable. It covered up the fact that I couldn't brush my hair or do anything this morning because I am right-handed. Um, I hope I didn't talk too fast. If I did, sorry. I'm from Massachusetts originally, and that's – I just talk fast. It's just who I am, um, and I'm also probably nervous doing this. So apologies if it's too fast. If I sound raspy – that's because I'm getting sick, because I needed something else on my things to kind of fret about. Um, and maybe I'll be back again, because in many ways this is more um, more fun for me to talk to. Again, stop shrugging, Sheila, because that hurts. Um, so anyway, that's it. I'm going to stop blabbing. It was great to talk to you guys all virtually. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow night, or I guess tomorrow's Friday. I'm not talking to you tomorrow. I'm going to an event. I will talk to you um, later this weekend. Have a great night. Bye.